Hi everyone, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit live in Washington, D.C., where it's a face-to-face -face real event. I'm John Furrier, your host. But virtual events, hybrid events, we're hybrid event as well. We've got a great remote interview. We've got a guest here in person, John Sankovich, president of Cloud Solutions at Smartronics, and John Brinden, who's the VP of AWS Managed Services, also known as A. MS with Amazon Web Services. John and John and three Johns here. <laughs> Welcome to theCUBE. Remote, in person, hybrid. Thanks, Welcome John. To the Cube. Great to be on theCUBE. Uh, long time viewer and we really appreciate what you do. So John, Likewise, it's super, super fun to be here remotely, but feel like I'm right there. So this is awesome. Yeah, I love the hybrid events. It's only going to get better. Uh, next time we'll be in the metaverse soon. But uh, John on the line there, I want to ask you with AWS, Managed services. Take us through what you guys are doing with Smart Trust because this is an interesting service. You guys are working together. How does that relate? Set the table for us. Yeah, well, you know, we're really excited about this announcement. We've been working with Smartronics since we launched uh, uh, AMS uh, four and a half years ago. So we've been able to build up working with them, you know, a huge library of automations and capabilities. And this really just uh, formalizes that in an offer. Uh, for our joint customers where we can bring the expertise from AWS and Smartronics and offer a, a full solution that's tightly integrated to help help uh, our customers jointly accelerate their cloud adoption as well as their operating model transformation as they start to move to a more DevOps motion and they need help. Uh, we're there together to provide our expertise and make that simple for them. Well, I appreciate it. We'll call you John B. John S. over here, J.S., uh, John Sankovic. Um, tell me about Smart Trust because you heard what's going on with DevOps 2.0, whole revolutions going on in DevOps. You're starting exactly. to see a highly accelerated modern application development environment, which means that the software developers are setting the pace. They're the pace car of the innovation. Right. And so other teams like security or IT become blocker, not blockers, a drag, an anchor. Mm -hmm. So. The, the shift left on security, for instance, is causing a lot of problems on the security team. So all this is going on like right now. So still, the speed is the game. What's your take? Sure, so absolutely. I think that's where this partnership really, really excels. Um, you know, we want customers to focus on their mission. You know, national security, healthcare outcomes. Um, we want them to kind of take the rest off their plate. So when you say some of the quote unquote blockers around security, uh, Smartronics has invested heavily in a FedRAMP authorized platform that sits on top of what AWS has done from a FedRAMP. And so right off the bat, speed, agility, um, we don't want our customers spending time replicating things that we've done at scale and leveraging what AWS has. And so uh, by kind of utilizing this, this joint offer, all of a sudden uh, a big part of that compliance is taken care of. Uh, and then things like DevOps, things like uh, SRE models that you hear a lot about we fold all that into this uh, combined service offering. I know a little about what you guys are doing because uh, you mentioned SRE is very cool, but let's take a minute to explain what you guys are doing because you guys are on the cutting edge of solving a lot of problems from infrastructure full around the DevOps stack. What do you guys do in, in the cloud services group? Sure, so I think John hit a little bit on it, but you know, we look at AMS as best in breed at scale, uh, managing core parts of the AWS infrastructure. Uh, what Smartronics does is many times customers have some unique requirements. And we take that core, kind of powered by AMS, and we try and fill in those kind of complementary skill sets and complementary requirements. And so something like the DevOps, which is basically making sure that those uh, people developing that software, they have also the ability to manage it and uh, you know, on an ongoing basis kind of run it. We develop all the frameworks and that's part of this offering to enable that. What's the solution, John B? Because I think you guys don't, this is, people have challenges, but I want to understand those challenges. And then when they go to the external managed service, what's involved? Can you walk us through that? Because I think that's important. Yeah, sure. You know, it, it turns out, and John nailed this one, that moving to the cloud, you know, can be, can be a big transformation for many, many enterprises and, and government teams, right? They've, they've, they've worked for many years and, have an ecosystem in their traditional data center, but when they move to the cloud, there's a, there's a lot of moving pieces. And so what we like to focus on is helping them with the undifferentiated aspects of safely and automating uh, cloud operations. So working with 
but Smartronics allows us to take what we're doing across the infrastructure services around security, around automation, around patching, instance management, container management, all of those are differentiated that we let these pass. Combine that with Smartronics and deep expertise across the application layer, across customers' unique environments, across uh, FedRAM moderate, and the various government standards and compliances. And we think we're able to get take a customer um, from kind of really early stage cloud experience and rapidly deploy, configure, and get them into a very stable, scalable uh, posture operationally on the cloud so that they can start to invest in their people, their skills, and their differentiated application uh, on the cloud that really drive the differentiation in their business and not have to worry about best practice configurations and operational runbooks and 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 automations and, and, and the latest DevSecOps capabilities that we'll pick up for them while they're training and getting their getting their uh, motions in place. John, as on the Smartronic side, talk about the, the difference between scale, okay, which is a big issue with the cloud sure, sure. Um, that these customers want to have with AMS. But then you also have some scale, maybe some scale too, but highly uh, compliant environments, regulated industries, for instance. Sure. This is the hot areas, because scale is unwieldy, but if you don't want get it, rain it in, it can be chaotic, right? So, right. and also regulations and compliance is a huge issue. Yeah, what, what, what we found is, um, at times customers look at it and they just get frustrated, <laughs> because it can be kind of intimidating. And we, as a combined team, really have spent a lot of time. We have accelerators to walk customers through that process and a really flexible model. If they feel that they have a lot of domain expertise in it, then we'll just kind of be almost a supporter. Uh, other customers look at it and say, you know, we'd like you to take the entire patch of that compliance. And so highly regulated uh, environments, both commercial, DOD, national security, um, federal civilian agencies, state and local, they're all looking to this and saying, we really want someone that's been through things like the AWS audited managed service provider, things like their managed uh, security service provider, things like FedRAMP or DOD IL-4 and 5. And I think, to be honest, Smartronics has just invested heavily in that with the goal of reducing all that complexity. And it's, it's really been taken off and we really appreciate the partnership uh, specifically with John and, uh, and the AWS AMS team. All right, so you guys working together. What's the ultimate benefit to the customer? Uh, I can, I'll, I'll give my thing uh, right <laughs> off the bat. All this innovation coming out of AWS, um, it's fantastic, but only if you have the ability to take advantage of it. And so thousands of new services being rolled out, uh, we really want customers to be able to take advantage of that and let, at times, us do what we do best and let them focus on, on their mission. And I think that's what, really AWS is all about, and we just feel very fortunate to be an enabler of that. Uh, John B, John talk, B. About the, talk about the uh, staffing issues too, because one of the problems that we have been reporting, and you know, this has come up at every reInvest, I saw Max Peterson about this as well, he promised last year he was going to train 29 million people, we'll see how that comes out at reInvent when the <laughs> report card comes back. I was kind of <laughs> busting his chops a little bit there, but he had a smile on his face, so I think he's going to hit his numbers. A lot of times, Maybe people don't have an SRE, they don't have a DevOps person, or, or they have some staff that they're in transition or transforming. This is a huge factor. What's your take on this? Yeah, you know, that, that is so important. You know, as John mentioned, it's all about helping the customers focus. And, and, and their, their cloud talent is, is, is scarce, and it's a scarce resource. And you, you want to make sure that your cloud talent is working on the cool stuff, or they're going to leave. And, and as you train and skill these folks, they want to focus on what really impacts the business, what's really differentiating. Doing, you know, doing the, 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 the cloud and the necessities on operations and operational tasks and sec ops and things like that, sometimes that's not the, the sexiest part of the work that, that, that the customer really wants to focus their team on. So again, I think together we're able to help drive high levels of automation and really do that day in and day out work that is not necessarily the differentiator of their business, and that's going to attract and keep the best and brightest minds in, in these uh, in these customers, um, which allows us to help them with the undifferentiated aspects of, of the heavy lifting. Yeah, not only is the availability of people, it's keeping the people. I love that, great call out there. Uh, okay, where does this go? Where does the relationship go? You guys are partnering, 
You get the AMS is going on strong, managed service is not going to go away. More and more people will be using managed services. It's part of the ecosystem, within the ecosystem. What's next in the relationship? Well, I, I think, you know, I'll, I'll speak first, and John, I'm sure you got some thoughts too, but, you know, we've got so many things on our plate around uh, predictive operations and the predictive capabilities that we're excited about tackling together. Um, obviously, there's all sorts of unique applications that require even deeper capabilities and working with Smartronics to help us, you know, provide even greater insight into the application layer. So I kind of see us expanding um, um, both horizontally as well, as well as vertically. And, and horizontally, we've got Customers looking at the edge with the outpost solutions, and we can snap into those capabilities as well. Uh, so there's a tremendous amount of kind of, I'd say, vertical and horizontal opportunity that we can uh, continue to expand in together. John, your reaction, that's, yeah, that's pretty right on. Absolutely, I think uh, John, John Bergen really hit it. And I think, you know, really machine learning. You know, that's a big area of focus. If you look at all this data that's being collected, predictive modeling, and so we, we have this kind of uh, transition from a model where people were basically watching screens reacting. And what the AWS MSP offer and, and what uh, you know, AMS offers is really predicting. So you, you're not doing that. You're not reacting. You're proactively ahead of things. And the, the honest truth is AWS is such a well-run service, it just doesn't break. You know, it doesn't break like what you see in a traditional kind of legacy infrastructure. And so uh, at times we're just continuing to climb that stack as, as John mentioned. You know, it's really interesting as you guys are actually talking, I'm thinking to myself, you know, just go back a couple of years ago, eight years ago or so, DevOps was a bad word. Devs dominate, <laughs> ops, oh, screw them. Yeah. Uh, now op operational leverage is a huge part of this, AI operations, um, that entire IT service management is being disrupted heavily by cloud operations right. that also facilitate rapid development models. Right, so again, this is like underreported, but it's a really nuanced point hardened operations for security and not holding back the developers is the cloud scale. What's your guys' reaction to that? Yeah, com completely agree. I think, you know, the, the automation piece of things, and I think customers are still going through transitions. You know, traditionally, uh, managed services means a big staff, and it's, like I said, sitting there watching screens, and you flip that model where you have developers actually deploying uh, code and infrastructure to support it, it's, you know, it's very transitional and uh, very transformative. And I think that's where an offering like what we've really partnered on really, really helps because at times it can be overwhelming for customers and we just want to simplify that and as I've said, let them focus yeah. on their mission. Yeah, amen. One last question before we break because I was talking to another partner, a big partner of AWS. Um, and we are talking about SaaS versus solutions and sometimes if you're too sassy, you're not really building a custom solution, but you can have best of both worlds, a little professional services, maybe some headroom on the stack, if you will, and you're building solutions. So the next question is, as you guys put this cutting edge innovative, innovative solution together, how are the, your, your customers consuming it? Like, what's the consumption? I'm assuming they must be happy because it's a lot of heavy lifting being taken away that they don't have to deal with. How's the contract yeah. process? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, we have the opportunity and we support customers in kind of all modes of their application stack. So, you know, a, a full stack solution, you know, even a legacy architecture moving to the cloud requires, you know, a, a high degree of automation to support it. And then as those applications become modernized over time, they become much more cloud native. And, and at some point they might even become a full stack uh, SaaS offer. Uh, so many of our customers actually run their SaaS platform uh, leveraging our capability as well. So, you know, I think it, it gives the, the, the customer a lot of optionality uh, and future kind of growth as they modernize uh, their application stack. John, your reaction to that? Absolutely, I think one of the greatest benefits is it's freeing up funds to do mission work. And so instead of spending time uh, procuring hardware and managing it and, you know, leasing data center space, they literally have more funding. And so we've seen customers literally transform their business because this piece of it's done more efficiently and they have really excess uh, and really uh, additional funding to, to do their mission. I well, love the business model innovation, faster, um, higher quality, easy, and inexpensive. That's the flywheel. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for coming on. We got the three John, John Sankovich, President, Cloud Solutions at Smartronics. Thank you for coming on, John Brinkton, VP of Amazon Web Services Managed Services, also known as AWS, and no, AMS. 
Yeah. AWS. <laughs> <laughs> Got upside down. <laughs> WM looks the same. Thank you guys for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thanks, John. We appreciate it. Great, great appreciate conversation. It. CUBE coverage here, AWS Summit. We're live on the ground and we're remote. It's a hybrid event. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.